Hey guys, welcome to the Learn PvP edition of the Destroyinator, my PvP video I released a few weeks ago. Uh, in this video I'm going to go over the fights that were in the video. I've slowed the fights down, almost down to real speed, um, a little bit faster. And I've changed up the music so that uh, I have some nice background music, uh, hopefully that works out. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to talk over all the fights and kind of tell you what my thinking was in the fights, what I was trying to do and what my basic tactics were um, so hopefully you can learn something from uh, from what I do so with that let's uh, crack a beer and get started in this fight I was just jumping into a zero zero system I knew there was a, uh, a small blob chasing me and one of the ships in the blob was a Tyrannus jumped in I saw the prophecy here I wanted to get out of his range so he couldn't have an effect on the fight so I immediately burned away from him micro warp drive on. I knew I was in the Tyrannus. I knew the Dramiel would catch me because he's much faster than me but by the time he caught me you can see here we are 50-60k off the Prophecy so I'm all good with the Prophecy. I've isolated the Dramiel so it's just me and him in this fight. I was taking a big risk here. Tyrannus first Dramiel. Um, a good Dramiel pilot should kill Tyrannuses every single time uh, but I was probably uh, just feeling like getting a fight and desperate to, to do anything so you can see I got in close I got my damage on as fast as I could and then I started my orbit I saw it was going down here so I kinda panicked and I overloaded my uh, afterburner right here at the end of the fight I don't think it made much difference I had my guns overheated the entire time because most frigate fights end before well before you'll ever burn out your guns um, you can see here, it looks like I'm gonna die I was shocked here I mean what the what the hell is going on here I managed to kill him with 4% structure left and uh, at this point I don't want to take even a lucky shot from that prophecy or anything so I just get out as fast as I can. One of the best trans fights I've had right there. I mean that was a uh, that was a really fun fight. Um, you see the blob finally came in. I think I had got them aggroed on the other side before I jumped. I'm not sure. And uh, I believe this is the same blob and the same night. I'm not, not positive about that. Uh, you can probably check the dates down the bottom left and find out. Uh, anyways, this blob was way too big for me to do anything. You know, I can't engage 20 pilots in my Tyrannus head-on. So what I did is I basically burned away from them. And you can see, I'm looking right here, I'm stretching them. I'm looking at which pilots are the furthest away from the gate. And what I'm trying to do is stretch them. I want to make their fastest pilots get well separated from the rest of them. You can see that some of them can still warp to them, but if I can drop them really quick, then by the time they warp in to lock me, I'll be done and I'll be out. So you see here, I see these rifters. These rifters are going way too damn fast. Rifters going over 3k a second it means they're probably nano, and that means they probably have all their low slots filled with overdrives and nanos. Uh, there's probably not a big tank on them. They'll go down pretty quick. So I'm wanting to get them isolated here. You can see I've selected my target. He's the one closest to me, the most isolated. I wait for uh, a little bit more isolation, and then I turn in on him real quick. I got to make this really fast. I got to get in. I've got null loaded because I know I'm going to overshoot and I want to get some good hits on that overshoot anyway. And uh, I start hitting him, hitting him hard, and you see he's dropping fast. I've already selected something to warp to before the fight's over, the line before the fight ends, and I'm spamming warp, and I'm out before any of the ships that have warped in can catch me. So you can see in local there, I get a little ego boost. They're calling me pro. So, ego boosted right there. So you see I warp off, and now in local. I uh, obviously have to agree with the guy, right? If I can figure out what to type. There we go. I agree. Alright, in this fight, I was back in a uh, pocket F-88, and there was this Tyrannus that wanted to come off station away from all his buddies to fight me, and I was more than happy to oblige him. I looked at his ship right there to see what guns he had. I want to make sure it wasn't a blaster, I mean a railgun Rannus. Railgun Rannus is called for different tactics, but uh, since I'm dual prop, a blaster Rannus means I want to orbit at 5k and load null. It's uh, old school Tyrannus fighting right there. Um, load null and orbit at 5k because for some reason uh, most Tyrannus still fly with um, web scram, and uh, although this guy doesn't. Um, but still, even the ones that are dual prop, uh, they only fit faction antimatter. So as long as you can kite them, you know, 5k, their faction antimatter is doing nothing to you while your nulls 
um, doing full damage to them at 5k. So you can see right here, it was an easy fight. Um, you know, I'm almost in the structure, but the, the dual prop ran us over half of its tank is actually in its structure. So it's kind of a, uh, a scary ship to fly, but uh, it's, it's good for getting some excitement, that's for sure. You can see I pop them there, and right as I'm popping them, the fighters from the carrier come in. Truth is, if you got your afterburner on, and you're in a frigate, you never have to worry about fighters as long as you're moving. Fighters will never hit an afterburner frigate uh, with the afterburner on. Um, I've done it so many times, and every once in a while they get a lucky hit, but for the most part, you can just ignore fighters when you're in a uh, frigate with an afterburner going. You can see I looted him. Nothing big there. Uh, just, I gotta get all the loot there, right? Alright, and I whip out. Probably should have cut this out of the video. Oh well. There you go. I'm out, but that's just Tyrannus Tyrannus. Um, it's I've won every Tyrannus versus Tyrannus fight I've ever had except for one. And that was against a Rail Rannus when I didn't look at his guns to see that he was a Rail Rannus. Um, so, as long as you do the proper intel and know what your enemy has, you will... Uh, oh, I'm checking for Faction Rats. For my inner Care Bear. What the hell am I doing here? Alright, next video please. I should cut this, but uh, I'm too lazy, so you get to watch me. Alright, you can see what's on this side of the gate. I've got them all aggroed. It's important you see that, so rewind if you need to. I got as many of them aggroed as I could, then I jumped to the gate. I've been playing this blob for a while. I jumped to the gate. There's the air zoo. I hit keep at 100 because I want to put, put distance between me and him. There's the Dramiel. That was my target. I'm in a Dramiel. I load a uh, faction EMP because most Dramiels are vulnerable to EMP with their shield tanks. Start burning. I want to get as much isolation on this Dramiel as possible from the gate where his buddies will jump in from. And you can see here, I should have kept going. I shouldn't have turned in so early. I should have burned out another 20 to 40k before I turned in. Uh, and that's uh, my biggest mistake in this fight. You see, now I've engaged. Uh, i got to get that DPS on him as fast as possible. You know, that can make the difference in the fight if you get the DPS on before the enemy does. Get in. Guns, again, and frigates. Overload your guns, start to finish. Don't burn them out, obviously, but 90% uh, of the time, the fight's going to end well before you have a chance to burn your guns out. Overload my afterburner there. I'm not sure if that was actually helping me. Um, you can see that air zoo is getting really close. I don't like that. He's got me sensor damped, but like I care. So, anyways, Trance is going. Are the Dramiels going down? I'm winning the fight easy. I've got something select to warp to. I'm starting to align as it's going down. Uh, I start to get worried, so I approach him again before I realign out. Make sure I finish him off quick. Starting to align out. I should be able to get out right here. Start warping. Oh no, the the air zoo overloaded his point for a second and pointed me. Cancelled my warp. I should have spammed it again. No, by the time I spam it again, he's got warp disruptor on me again. There goes that. Now the Tyrannus is on me. I'm screwed. Uh, I think maybe I can burn away from the Tyrannus, but I'm scrammed in web. No way I can outrun him at this point. Time to uh, turn in and fight. Uh, you never know. Maybe I'll get lucky. So turn in. Start fighting. Too late. Hurricane's in. I think it's an Artie Kane. Good night. And I'm down. So, and they get my pot too. There goes the pot. Uh, this fight could have worked. I played with these guys for a long time trying to get this fight set up. And uh, that was the best isolation I could get out of them right there. Unfortunately, it was not enough. So you can see here in this fight, I'm uh, it's just Dramiel versus Dramiel 1v1. There's not a whole lot I can say about this fight. I can just talk about the Dramiel in general. A lot of people look down on the Dramiel. Oh, it's an overpowered ship. And you no, know, I, I think if I can get a Dramiel for 50 million isk and do what a Dramiel can do, I, I, I'm not too concerned. I don't, you know, if you want to complain about someone using the game mechanics that exist, it's the same as people who complain about people using Falcons. Yeah, it sucks, and it can really ruin a fight. And you know, if you're on the the bad side of it, it sucks, and no one likes it. But it's in the game mechanics and to choose not to use some mechanic to your advantage because it might ha uh, there's some I don't know pride issue I, I don't know it, it makes no sense to me play the game uh, to the game's fullest and if ECM's overpowered use ECM if uh, Dramiel's are overpowered use Dramiel's you know go out there and do it um, it just means you'll get bigger fights and then do better stuff um, and there that's just a Dramiel 1v1 there was nothing special about that fight 
I had the better skills. Uh, I don't know that I flew better than him. I, I might have got damage on a little bit earlier than he did, but uh, mostly that was probably a fight where uh, my skill points won the fight for me. Uh, that and I had 200 millimeter auto cannons, and he had 150. So my DPS output, I'm sure, was more than his. This fight's actually interesting. I had this harpy and hurricane, and I wanted to fight the harpy, but the hurricane was staying right next to him. So I dragged the hurricane up away from the harpy, then I warped down to station, and the idea was to put it so the hurricane couldn't warp, so he's 130 from the harpy. I was thinking, oh, he can't warp to the harpy now, I've got the harpy all to myself. I didn't think the hurricane would warp down to the station, so he actually outsmarted me on that one. But the tactic there was to isolate the, uh, the harpy from the hurricane by uh, warping down to the station and uh, landing... Uh, less than 150 from the hurricane, so I could isolate the harpy. My tactic there with the Dramiel was uh, afterburner on, barrage loaded. I knew it was a blaster harpy, so I basically just kited him um, with, with barrage, and that was you know easy. And he went down pretty quick, and I avoided most of his damage because of that. The only time I took a hit was from that RDK. You can see here, I'm zooming in on locals to show you my uh, unique local smack, I guess. And this one, I was back here. There was a lot of guys active in this area, and uh, I found this Arizu. He was wanting to fight me, so first thing I did was drag him off station, get him away from that Archon. So the Archon has no way of helping him. I pulled him out. It looks like we're a little bit over 100k. That's perfect. And now I decide to turn in. Turn in. There we go. The fighters are out from the Archon, but again, fighters are absolutely useless against frigates if the frigate has the uh, afterburner on and even the micro warp drive on as long as you're moving if you're sitting still with the micro warp drive on you die there you go I'm in tackle the air zoo uh, afterburner on orbiting putting DPS on him this is the fight air zoo's got a lot of hit points uh, you know it's no telling if I'm actually gonna win this fight at this point but uh, a lot of times I'll attack ships that even I know that I have no chance of killing just to to kinda piss them off and and get them to bring out something to come kill me because I know that like if I tackle a uh, say I tackle a Brutix with a, a Dramiel I know the Brutix has no chance of, of doing any DPS or doing any real damage to me so I'll just tackle him all day and, and safely get away whenever I want to and wait for something to come on scan like a, a interceptor or some kind of frigate that's coming in to help the Brutix or whatever and that was the idea here I wanted them to bring out something smaller that I could kill so I was just trying to stir up a fight at this point I knew I could escape it at any time that I wanted and I knew the Aerosu would never really do real damage to me um, I think I missed it but he had used ECM drones on me I was too busy talking about other stuff uh, I just locked switched to my drones tab locked up the ECM drones and took them out because I knew I'd have no chance if I was getting jammed by ECM drones all the time I see the Drake come in, so I'm, I'm on comms right now talking to the guys in my alliance and uh, telling them I have an air zoo tackled, hoping they can get here in time. I call them, tell them to start running this way in, uh, I believe I told them to get in stealth bombers, and they were headed this way. Drake warped out. He's warping out so he can come back in on top of me, rather than burn to me. Air zoo. It looks like the air zoo's a shield tank here. He's taking forever to get out of shields. I'm selectively overloading. Um, there's a rapier on cloaks or undocks, so actually probably undocked. Uh, so that's a new threat. I definitely don't want to get dual webbed by that. Uh, Vengeance, I'm not too worried about. He's far enough away that I have time. And now that I'm in armor on the air zoo, the air zoo's going down considerably faster. And here comes that Drake back in. Again, Drake's not a big concern. I don't really care about the Drake. Um, I just want to get out of there before that rapier gets me dual webbed. So I'm starting, I got something selected, as always. Have it selected before the fight's over. Don't let the fight end, and then you try to select it, and then I'm out of there uh, as soon as the air zoo goes down. All right, this fight, uh, this is a long one, but it was uh, it was an interesting one. I, I really enjoyed this fight. This is one of my best hurricane fights that, that I really enjoyed. I came in the system, and what you don't see before is I had seen a Falcon on scan um, prior to, to starting the, uh, the video here, the fraps. And what I was doing was I was trying to look around system. I knew they were active. And I'd seen the Falcon, so I knew there was probably bait. These guys, I think, had baited me uh, a couple nights before. I'm not sure, but uh, I was already sure this was this was a trap, and I didn't really care. I knew that if it was a trap, I could always get out of it, or most likely 
Uh, sometimes you get so desperate for fights that you really don't care if it's a trap. Actually, that's usually what happens to me. I'll fight stuff I usually shouldn't because I'm, I just want to do something and not fly around all night, be bored. Eve's way too boring most of the time. It's uh, an hour of, boring, of boredom for 30 seconds of fun. Alright, there's the uh, Mirbadon. I'm chasing him belt to belt. Finally, here we go. Do I got him? Yep, I got him here. Finally, I get him. He was baiting. He, he just looted my wreck, so I don't even have to take criminal here. He had looted my wreck. And now I have uh, to go ahead to shoot him. I'm in low sec, point three here. I'm engaging. I've got barrage loaded in my cane. Oh, there's the Falcon. My idea was to kite because I thought it was bait, so I wanted to be able to get out if it went bad. There's the Falcon. I immediately burned to the Falcon. The reason you burn to the Falcon is to keep him from cloaking. And uh, just keep trying to lock him. I get my drones on him right there. That's good. If you can get the drones on him, he can't jam out the drones. So the drones are going to be doing DPS to him nonstop now for the rest of the time I'm on him. I uh, keep trying to lock. That's the thing. Just get right on top of him so he can't cloak. And my drones will stop him from cloaking anyway. But stay right on top of him so as soon as you get locked, you can really do heavy damage. I should have changed from barrage. That's my big mistake here. I should have changed from barrage. Some close range faction ammo here would have been much better. But I just keep trying to lock, keep trying to lock until I get this lock. I want to get locked so I can kill this Falcon and then go move on to the other ships. I can't fight with a Falcon on the field. So I get locked, finally. It's all about chance. Eventually you're going to get a lock if you keep at it long enough. Got the lock. I'm doing big damage to him. Oh, he got another jam. So my drones are still on him. The Harbinger was too close. I burn away. I don't want that Harbinger to go scram on me right now when the Falcon's on the field. The Falcon warped off. That he was taking too much damage from my drones after I had done the initial damage. He warped off. Um, you're going to see what happened to him in a minute. You can see now I'm starting to burn off. And I shot at the Harbinger. I was going to try to kite the Harbinger. But then in comes another Falcon. Yet another Falcon. So now I'm uh, burning away from that Falcon. I was going to try to get in and approach him and get on top of him. But he was too close to the Harbinger. So instead of getting in the other tactic with Falcons... Just burn out of the range. You know, get more than 100k away from that Falcon, and his jams are going to be pretty much ineffective. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to burn and drag the uh, Harbinger out away from the range of the Falcon. You can see the Falcon just lost his range. He's no longer effective. So I'm changing ammo here. When I go in on that Harbinger, I'm going to brawl. I'm going to go with full damage and try to drop him fast before the Mirbadon can get on me. So I've got my ammo switched. Here I go. I'm turned in back to him. The Falcon's warped out so it can warp back in on top of us. I'm turning in, going in, I'm going to just go full out, uh, try to drop this Harbinger as fast as possible. I've got my drones on. They've already killed some of my drones. I don't know what that Myrmidon was doing. Something's really weird with, with what he was doing there. If you watch, I think he puts his drones on my drones for some reason. Uh, okay, I'm dropping this guy. I'm giving it a little bit of heat. I'm being a little reckless with my overloading here. And he's going down relatively fast. I'm certainly winning this fight. But that Myrmidon is steadily closing, so that's a concern. Uh, stay on this guy, trying to drop him. You can see he's he's got some speed, or for some reason I'm moving away from this Harbinger. I need to get back in closer to do full damage. That was a mistake I made. I've lost all my drones at this point. Uh, the Myrmidon killed him, I guess. Um, so I'm back in, moving in. You see I get within 10k of that Myrmidon. If he had a web or a scram, I could have been in big trouble right there, but uh, I managed to slide past him and there goes the harbinger boom all right now i want to go the mirbadon but i've burnt out my newts and if i'm going to take the mirbadon i have to kite him so the falcon's back in i can't kite with the falcon right there i'm burning away my my goal at this point was to uh to do the same thing all over again get the mirbadon to chase me out away from the falcon and either I isolate the falcon or the mirbadon but no such luck mirbadon warps falcon cloaks fight over and I uh, go loot. You can see here, I didn't know it during the fight. I didn't know it until I went to post the kills afterwards. But uh, I checked and I saw that first Falcon that I was on. He, uh, When he warped out, I guess he was in such a panic to get out that he warped to a gate with criminal. And uh, kaboom, I get Falcon kill mail. So that's it for this uh, Learn PvP edition uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Keep an eye on eproguides.com for more videos and more articles and more ways to uh, 
improve your game in EVE Online.